Many experts have suggested that the exceptionally high excess mortality around the world is associated with the COVID injections. These claims are backed up by the statistics. Deaths seem to increase always within the next few months following injection campaigns. This observation calls for a closer look. Is it possible to find a systematic pattern concerning the delays and ratios between the injections and excess deaths? And if so, would it be possible to accurately predict future death peaks based on currently available data on COVID injections? On the 9th of December 22, such predictions for 10 countries were posted to an independent news channel in Finland called Positv. On the 15th of December, a majority of these predictions were published for the audience. Belgiassa lähtee jyrkkä nousu viikolta 45 ja vuoden vaihteessa erittäin korkea kuolleisuus. By late January 2023, the data was available to see how well the predictions had come true. As you are about to witness, all of them were surprisingly accurate. Most of the predictions were made when mortality data was available up to about week 42. However, at the time of posting the predictions on the 9th of December, Euromomo, the European mortality monitor, Euromomo.eu, displayed data up till week 46. We will set this as the point of reference. For countries not covered by Euromomo data, human mortality database mortality.org was used instead. The predictions were based on the data concerning the fourth vaccine doses, which were administered in the target countries in September, October and November 22. At that time, the number of fifth doses delivered was very low and there was not enough data to estimate their influence on mortality. When judging the accuracy of the predictions, we should consider an error marginal of one week extremely good and two weeks variation quite acceptable. After all, we are predicting future mortality which is affected by a multitude of variables that cannot be foreseen into the future. Belgium. A steep rise of mortality will start from week 45 and reach a very high peak by the end of the year, followed by a rapid decline. As we can see, based on the Belgium mortality curve visible up to week 46, it was impossible to know that a high mortality peak was approaching. The way the prediction was formulated tells that even week 46 was not visible at the time, because it would have not made sense to predict something that was already observable as untrue. The steep rise began from week 46 and the very high peak arrived in week 51, followed indeed by a very rapid decline. So all three arguments of the predictions were met with very good accuracy. Sweden. In Sweden mortality will rise beginning from week 44 and reach a very high peak in the end of December. As was the case with Belgium, no sign of a forthcoming high peak was visible before week 46. Neither was there no way of knowing, based only on the mortality curve, that the inclination from week 44 would continue onwards. The rise from week 44 up to week 51 can be seen as one steep rise despite of the minor peak on week 47. The eventual peak lasted from week 51 to the first week of January 23, so definitely we can accept end of December 
as a correct expression. So the prediction was to the point. Estonia. In Estonia, mortality will stay around the same level as week 40 for the rest of the year. Estonia was the only country where no rise of excess mortality was predicted. Instead, the continuation of the mortality on the same level. When you look at the Estonian curve, you can see that from about week 23 onwards, the average level was pretty constant. If anything, a slight declining trend was visible after the peak on week 39. An extrapolation of that trend would have led to a prediction of lower mortality in the weeks to come. However, the mortality from week 48 onwards turned out being in par with the average mortality before week 44. The prediction was quite accurate. Even if the level of week 40 was exceeded, no remarkable new peak was seen. Germany, Austria and Switzerland In Germany, Austria and Switzerland, mortality will stay at high level to the end of the year and will reach a new peak in January. Age-specific vaccine information is only available from Austria, but our world in data reveals that the pace of the general vaccination campaigns is similar for all three countries. This is why these countries were taken as a single group. Again, we see no indication of a high peak approaching based on the mortality data up to week 46. The second point of the prediction was very general, but certainly correct. The mortality was high up to the end of the year. In Austria, the highest point was reached on the first week of January, although it was pretty much on the same level as the peak of week 51. We can certainly say the prediction was within two weeks of the target. Here you can see the excess mortality curves from Germany in blue and Switzerland in green. Quite apparently the general locations of elevated mortality are similar to for each of these countries and particularly so when it comes to the period from week 44 to 52. So a time after making the predictions. So precisely as predicted, the mortality curves of these three countries were aligned. How could this have been known in advance if it wasn't for the similar vaccine campaigns? Portugal 65 to 74 years old mortality will rise in December, leading into a high peak at the turn of the year. Also in the case of Portugal, no signs of a new high mortality peak was observable at the time of prediction. On the contrary, the curve of the 65 to 74 years old was displaying a slightly declining trend since the highest spike in the summer. However, the prediction was again correct. Mortality shifted onto a higher level in December and peaked on week 50. Denmark At the moment, the mortality in Denmark is going towards the red limit and will pierce it and reach a record level in the beginning of January, then start declining rapidly. The prediction concerning Denmark, unlike all the other countries, was posted separately first via messenger on December 19th. At that time, Euromomo showed mortality data up to week 48. Mortality was on par with the general level since the previous summer, so no sign of a new peak approaching. The Euromomo red line indicating substantial excess mortality was indeed pierced on week 50 and a record level peak was reached 
on week 51. So two weeks earlier than predicted, which is an acceptable accuracy. A somewhat rapid decline was also observable after the peak. As we have seen, all of these six predictions were remarkably accurate and there was no way of getting this right simply by lucky guessing. And apart from the vaccination booster data, there was no other factors that the predictions were based on. Finally, we will look at the two countries where the predictions were not quite as accurate. Finland. Deaths of 65 to 74 years old will peak in weeks 45 to 46. After that there will be a decline followed by a new inclination at the turn of the year. This image was originally created on the 27th of November and first posted to PosiTV a few days later. At that time, the Euromoma information was visible up to week 45 max. It turned out that the deaths did peak on weeks 45 to 46, and after that there was a declination. So far, so good. As all the December data became available around mid-January, we saw in the case of many countries that mortality peaked strongly within two weeks after the fifth doses peak, which was a pattern previously unobserved. To conclude, the failure to predict the Finnish mortality peak on week 51 was due to insufficient information about the fourth and fifth doses that were administered after week 47. Norway Mortality in Norway will reach about the level of week 12 on weeks 47 to 48 and start a deep rise in January. A new peak was nowhere in sight based on the mortality data up to about week 44. Norway data is not shown in Euromomo, so the excess mortality is based on the overall mortality data from HMD. By week 49, the curve had raised to the level of week 12, so just a one-week deviation from the prediction for this part. However, a high peak was reached after that on week 51, and most of this was among the people of 70 plus years old, so in Norway we must therefore conclude that the mortality peak associated with the vaccination peak on week 34 came about three weeks later than predicted and was higher than anticipated. So although a rise in mortality was correctly predicted, the accuracy was lower than with the other countries. Although these two predictions didn't hit the target as accurately as the others, they were still on the right track based on the same model that worked so well with the other eight countries. Their result in no way speaks against the remarkable consistency in which the mortality development in the other countries conformed to the predictions based entirely on the booster vaccination campaigns of autumn 22. There was one more country that hasn't been discussed so far, and that was Poland. Well, the Polish mortality data at the time of making this report is not available for January, and because the Polish prediction was about January 23, the case is still open. If future mortality peaks can be predicted based on the injection data, what other explanation is there than a causal link? If the excess deaths, or a major part of them, was not actually caused by the injections, what was the medium in between 
that explains this correlation. The conclusion of this study is the same conclusion that has been made by a huge number of medical doctors, researchers, scientists, that the COVID vaccination campaigns must be halted immediately and a thorough investigation must be executed to find out the causality between the vaccinations and the excess deaths worldwide.